Hello, I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Mount Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today we're introducing the final segment in a three-part series about making responsible choices about drug usage in dairy cows. Now in previous segments, in part one, we discussed how the, what the role of the veterinarian is in um, drug usage on dairy farms. In part two, we were discussing the different types of allowable drug usage that can be used on dairy farms. And today in part three, we're going to be talking about some practical aspects that will help reduce the risks of residues occurring in milk and meat. Now the occurrence of antibiotic residues in meat and milk isn't very frequent. Um, for example, in 2012, less than 0.02% of milk tanker loads had detected levels of violative residues in them. It's a very, very low percentage, and that percentage has been falling on an annual basis. In fact, since 2003, the percentage of milk tankers that have been detected to have antibiotic residues has fallen by about 60%. So we're making some good progress there, and the same type of progress is also being made on reducing residues that are occurring in uh, dairy cattle who leave the dairy production to go into meat. However, residues do occasionally occur and that's because antibiotics and other products that have milk withholding times are used on most conventional dairy farms and they're used for good reason to maintain the, the welfare of animals that become ill. Now the reason that residues occur is typically simply because we're people and people make mistakes. The most common mistakes that are made that result in residues in either meat or milk are mistakes in recording the type of treatment, mistakes in identifying the animal that was treated, mistakes in communicating between maybe the person giving the treatment and the people either milking the cows or responsible for bringing the cows to market, and mistakes in training people who are using medications. And we'll be talking about some of the simple things we can do on farms to reduce the probability of having these mistakes occur. I want to start off with a scenario. Let's say you're the owner of a dairy farm. And last night on your farm, two cows delivered bull calves. One of those cows, the mother of one of these calves, was a first lactation heifer. She'd never received any dry cow antibiotics or other treatments previously. And the second cow was a third lactation cow who at the end of her lactation had received intramammary treatment with a commercial dry cow product that contains dihydrostreptomycin and penicillin. Then she'd been dried off and she'd had a full 60 day dry period. So you walk out as the farmer, there's been two cows that have delivered these two bull calves and your workers who have cared for the calves ask you, when they can be sent to market. Here's four different options. You could say, well, both could be shipped immediately. Or you might say, well, they both need a withholding period for 10 days. Or a third option should be, well, maybe the withholding period before they go should be at least 30 days. Or maybe there's different withholding periods. Maybe only the bull calf from the heifer can be shipped immediately. I present this scenario because it's a typical scenario that, can, that occurs on dairy farms and can result in confusion about withholding periods. To properly answer that question, it requires an understanding of how to minimize risks. And I'll give you the answer to that scenario at the end of this presentation. There are six principles that can be followed that'll really help to reduce the risk of residues occurring in milk and dairy beef. The first principle is to ensure that you have a strong relationship with your veterinarian. That means you wanna be sure that your veterinarian is involved enough in your dairy so that they can be involved in helping with animal health decisions. You need to have a discussion with your veterinarian, your farm workers, and yourself to agree upon treatment protocols for the variety of diseases that occur on your dairy. And ideally, you'd like to have these treatment protocols written. 
because that'll give you an extra layer of safety so that the people actually administering the treatments have uh, written instructions to follow. Having this strong relationship with the veterinarian is absolutely fundamental to um, safely producing nutritious milk and nutritious dairy beef. The second principle that'll help us reduce the risk of residues is to thoroughly understand the differences in the allowable types of drugs used on dairy farms. This really comes down to reading the label of every product used on every farm and following those labels exactly. If the labels are not going to be followed exactly, um, then we have to follow the rules for extra label drug usage. And of course, as we discussed in the previous episode, all extra label drug usage must be supervised by your veterinarian of record. Now the third principle that will help us reduce the risk of residues is probably really the most important. And that third principle is to provide good animal health care, good overall animal husbandry, so that we really prevent disease and don't even have to use these products for treatment. We want to ensure that we provide good diets, good housing, and um, that we have good systems in place that allow diseases, when they do occur, to be detected very early. And then when an animal does, unfortunately, develop a disease, we want to make sure it's not just treated based on symptoms, but that each disease receive, each animal that's ill, receives an examination and a diagnosis as arrived at before a treatment is administered. Now the fourth principle of reducing the potential for the risk of residues is decide who on the farm is allowed to give treatments. And those people, the animal health managers on the farm, should be provided training and they should work alongside the veterinarian of record so that they're properly supervised to ensure that the drugs are being administered to the right cows in the right dosages and in the right uh, routes of administration. So this training is really essential in order to ensure that drugs are used properly. And after the training's done, we also need to have systems in place to ensure that we can monitor the drug usage to make sure that the amounts of the drugs being used on the farm correspond with the amounts that would be expected given the treatment protocols and the overall incidence of disease occurring on the dairy. So providing training and monitoring drug usage is, is very important to help us reduce our risks of residues. The fifth principle is a very obvious principle, but sometimes we slip a little bit on it. And that's we want, uh, the importance of identifying all animals using a permanent ID and then keeping two types of records for all animals that are treated. The first type of record that we want to keep is a temporary cowside record. In some instances, this may be the chalk bard in the milking parlor where animals that have received treatments are clearly indicated. In other instances, it may be a clipboard that has the um, treatment records of the cow. So temporary cowside records easily accessible to the people treating the animals and milking the cows need to be provided for every animal and every treatment. And then secondly, secondarily, we need to have permanent records. So a permanent cow health record. On small dairies, this may be kept on paper on a cow card. On large dairies, these are almost always computerized. These permanent cow records have information transferred from the temporary records, so we have a lifelong history of the treatments that each animal has received. And then the final principle that'll help us reduce the risk of residues is focused on reducing the risk of residues occurring in dairy beef. And one of the things that we need to do is to provide some redundancies. Simple way to do that is to have two people responsible for deciding if an animal may leave the farm to go into the dairy beef um, chain. Not one person. One person may decide the animal gets to be called, and then on a farm we need to have a system where that decision is checked by someone else. So we have this redundancy to ensure that these mistakes don't occur. All right, let's come back to our scenario. Remember, 
we've got these two cows that delivered bull calves. One cow was a first lactation heifer. She'd never received any treatments. The second animal was a third lactation cow who had received a dry cow treatment, had her complete dry period, and then both of these animals have on the same day. The question is, are there differences in when these calves can be shipped off to market? So the first option that we had in this scenario was that both of those bull calves could be shipped immediately. That option is incorrect. The second option was that both of those bull calves could be shipped in 10 days. That option is incorrect. The third option was that both of those bull calves needed to wait for at least a 30 day withholding period. And that option is incorrect. The only correct answer for this scenario is that only the bull calf from that heifer can be shipped immediately because the heifer has never received an antibiotic and the colostrum that was given to that bull calf was completely free of any antibiotic residue. The bull calf that came from that third lactation cow that had been dry treated with a commercial antibiotic product containing antibiotics, that calf requires a 30 day meat withholding period. The only way you can know that is to keep good records of the drugs that are given to cows, including dry cows, and to read the labels of those products so you understand the risks. So in this third part of our series about responsible drug usage on dairy farms, we can really sum up how to reduce the risks of having residues in milk and meat by um, simply ensuring that everyone reads the drug labels and follows the drug labels. Everyone that administers products on dairy farms needs to know the rules for responsible drug usage and know the risks. Every dairy farm should work with a local veterinarian of record to help develop rational treatment protocols and then those treatment protocols should be exactly followed. We want to make sure that antibiotics are used only when they're indicated. The, the cow, before she's treated a sick animal, um, her medical history should be reviewed. And we want to ensure that we have a diagnosis before a treatment is administered to ensure that we use the right treatments and have the right meat and milk withholding periods. We want to make sure that as dairy producers, we're also responsible beef producers. Keep treatment records follow withholding periods, and make sure we double check before letting those dairy animals go into the dairy beef market.